Did you happen to reset Karambit? When Karambit got the nerf to not being able to kill through death ignore buffs, aka indoor, the majority of the community then decided to reset Karambit. It might not have been a bad idea. Before he was a PvP and a PvE king. In Battlefield, you could just spam one of his skills and just kill pretty much anyone. So now after the nerf, you may not have him built anymore. For free to play players, he is a free natural five-star star monster in your monster story and he's still a pve king i'm going to show you how i use him and a very unorthodox team comp that i use with him if you like my videos and like my content hit the sub button hit the like button hit that bell dingy dingy thing so you know when i post a video let's go baby Tip of the day. This is something that I missed from the patch notes. Collection challenge. It reset. Make sure to get these done. You get effect stones. You get sky stones. You get summons. You get a bunch of gold and you get devilmon as well. I never keep track of this timer. The more you know. All right, here he is, Karambit. Natural five star fire raven. He's not the greatest in PvP anymore. He can ignore like invincibility and shield, sure. But where he really shined was ignoring the endure buff. But now that he can't do that anymore, more. He's not the greatest selection for PvP. Most Orbeas can just two-shot him anyway. So is he worth building in 2023? For free to play, yes, absolutely. Let's talk about Karambit real quick. Karambit is a ramp-up damage dealer, mainly for his basic attack. He's great as a non-soul link monster, but he really shines as a soul link. He has low damage modifiers on his skills, and a lot of people don't really see that. His third skill only has like a total of like 360 percent of his attack but it has a 90 percent chance to proc his second skill if he has a attack speed buff of level three and above this is important to know he has a passive that whenever an attack successfully hits it's a five percent rate but his attack speed can go up and his second skill also applies attack speed up buff to himself 508 percent attack modifier here so nothing too crazy compared to other monsters however his basic attack this is what makes karambit so good he attacks the enemy twice with his basic attack for a total of 176 percent attack damage however he also has a 35 percent chance to do bonus damage 66 percent of his attack modifier but it ignores 40 percent of the defense so with his basic attack being very strong karambit only shines in high attack speed builds before when he ignored beneficial effects yeah maybe you can make him more of like a slow attack speed nuker build but you want to build him with his highest attack speed as possible with high precision the faster your attack speed is the more times you're going to be able to proc that bonus damage these are my karambit stats right here it's nothing too crazy i'm trying to improve my runes but the runes i get are either really crappy or the substat rolls just really do not go into my favor I have him on Swift Blade, Attack Speed in Slot 2, Crit Damage in Slot 4, and Attack in Slot 6. But let me show you the team comp I run him with. This team comp is a very unorthodox team. As you all may already know, I run Rakuni. Rakuni is my healer. And because I main Orbia, Rakuni helps Orbia tremendously in the amount of damage that she does as well. He will lower the skill cooldowns, he'll give me skill acceleration, and his passive healing with his basic attack and and his third skill, which is a single target big heal, Rakuni can keep up my whole team. Obviously, since Rakuni is a support healer, but he has a basic attack as a gimmick, you want to run high attack speed, high precision, and then just make him as tanky as you can. The third monster that I run with this team comp, which a lot of people don't use, is Megan, the Water Mystic Witch. Why I run Megan in this team is one, of course, her buff gives a level two attack buff and a level two attack speed buff. Her second skill is a big damage modifier, so I run her on a damage build, and it's a low cooldown of 18 seconds, but this also applies an evasion down debuff to the enemy. This will help with my Karambit 
and my Rakuni. This also helps with the precision factor and attack speed if you don't have the stats. She's at 82% crit, 151 crit damage, low attack speed, but let me showcase what this unorthodox team can do. All right, so Naraka, I go in with a different team and then I switch out the Megan just so I got that bonus, you know, you know that thing, you know that thing I taught y'all. But anyway, for Karambit, I just use his first skill. I turn off the second skill and I just let, let Karambit stack up attack speed 10 as much as possible and uh, go to work. And I just make sure, you know, I have teammates that have the attack buff, which I have Megan, which gives the attack buff too. But we already have like, you know, two Bastets and a Chasun. So we have a lot of attack buff. But as you can see, I am just putting in a ton of work uh, with Karambit. Look at Karambit and how fast his blades are swinging. It's just hilarious oh he's only on attack speed four now too but that's all right so let me get rid of this uh premise phase and then uh i'll get back to work not to mention cram is great for this premise phase like i just switched the frost orbia and then and then cram does his thing but i can literally just stand right here and uh i don't i don't i don't take any damage uh and even with these fires around i try not to stand the fires uh, I try to always take the tower that doesn't ha that has the most fires because I know how to control the ads and the ads will never touch my tower ever with this team, so it doesn't really matter. All right, switch back to wind. Let's just see how much damage. All right, that's me. Come on, Karamba, get your thing. Let's get that attack speed up to 10, 7, come on, 8, 9, 10. Come on, let's do it. So I'm going to back up a little bit just so they don't get the burn. There we go. Let's go. All right, Karamba, put in your work. Let's go. With this team, though, I always have to get out of the heal block. Uh, I don't always have to. If, if there's like a cleanser on the team, then I'm okay. Uh, but I always want to make sure that I can at least try to stay out of the heal block because I don't have a cleanser on my team. And Rakuni doing his thing to get rid of the dots. I mean, that's it's, it's important to not have heal block. So I'm also going to show you a run to what his second skill would do if you just turn that on instead. I don't like that because it actually makes him jump backwards and then forwards to do damage. But this is a close race with Muscle. Almost got the 4 million mark, but GG. Good job, Karambit. Karambit Orbia only for damage too. All right, let's do a damage run test per se, just using his second skill and see how that works out. We're going to be running with Masal again, so this is a good damage uh, indicator whether the first skill or the second skill is better. All right, I'm going to take out my Bastet, put Megan in, switch skills, boom, there we go. All right, let's do it. Like you'll, you'll see, though, like the second skill is just not where it needs to be compared to the first skill because of how many times he has to like jump back and everything like that. Uh, and it, it loses out on attack, attacks and basic attacks, so... Um, it's just not not good for him and you'll you'll see that here I'm also gonna do one run with Megan as a soul link as well Just to spam the attack speed and have a karambit on just a non soul link monster Just so you can see the difference there, too. All right, so there we go. Let's check the damage test I'm just telling you that I know the first skill is gonna be better for sure. Uh, let's go and see what we got Yep, 322 313 298. All right, this is a good test of 400k power level. We only have one bass set, so this will be actually be good to put Megan in as a soul link like that. There we go. Second skill only. Let's do it. All right, let's check the damage meters on this one. 3.9 million, 3.6 million. And that's it for today's video. I just wanted to showcase this rare unorthodox team because I like doing things different. And I'm really the only one that probably uses Rakuni and Megan. I'm not a creator that tells people what they should be doing. I consider myself a creator that helps the community to make sure they don't make any mistakes. I will never tell you that this is a must build or you summon for something or we might as well quit the game. There's so many different things you can do as long as you're having fun, but also not wasting other people's time. Nobody wants to fail White Shadow Castle or Boiling Waterfall because our teammates bring the wrong monsters or they don't know the mechanics of a fight. That's what I try to help with. And you can summon and make whatever monster you want. As long as it goes along with the mechanics of the fight, there's so many different options out there. If you like my videos and like my content, sub, like, ding, ding, a bell. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.